everyone. Grab your comfy pillows and let's get started for story time. Today's book is called Hot Hot Roti for Dada G. Anil was glad his grandparents had come to stay. Dada G, his grandpa, was teaching him to stand on his head and sit like a serene lotus. Daddy Ma, his grandma, Ma's prayer song made him bob his head from side to side, and the sweet curling smoke from her incense stick tickled his nose so. But his grandparents' stories were the best of all. Emil loved hearing about the faraway village with the green wheat fields and the swaying coconut palms. Who's telling me a story? asked Emil. No one answered. Sweet smoke snaked into his nose and the tinkle of a tiny bell murmured in his ear. Daddy Ma's eyes were closed. Hurry um, hurry um, she chanted. Anil turned to his Dada Ji, who was standing on his head. Will you tell me a story, Dada Ji? Anil asked. Hanji, yes, sir, one minute, said upside down Dada Ji. Then he flipped over, landing with a soft thump and became a serene lotus on the rug. Anil hopped on his grandfather's lotus lap and Dada G began. In a village far, far away where the warm breeze made the green wheat fields dance and the brown coconuts rustled lived, a lad who astonished the villagers morning, noon, and night. Anil winked at Dada Ji. After all, the lad in the story was none other than his very own Dada Ji. So the story is about his grandpa. Long ago, Dada Ji went on. In the morning, the lad wrestled the snorting water buffalo and the villagers cried, ah, way, wah, oh wow. At noon, he tied two hissing cobras in a knot. Wah! cheered the villagers. At night, the mighty lad spun three trumpeting elephants by their tails. Wah! Wah! shouted the villagers. What made the lad so strong is the hot, hot roti that sizzled and whizzled in Badi Ma's wood hearth. You see, Baba, Badi Ma made the best roti around. Hungry villagers trampled tall fields and swam angry rivers to sniff the fluffy, puffy roti that bubbled and wobbled in ghee on the hot, hot tawa pan. Each day, the lucky lad smacked his lips, rubbed his belly, and ate a stack so high with a bit of tongue-burning mango pickle. He wanted the power of a tiger, Baba. After the lad had gobbled up the last roti, he licked the specks on his fingers, one by one, and burped twice. <laughs> then the power came rolling in like a great flood. Arwa! Hanji, yes, sir, said the mighty lad, and he went off to do more wonderful things. He made earth rumble beneath him in the morning. He shook the giant mango tree for Badi Ma's pickle pot at noon. He touched the blue sky with his bare feet at night. 
Ar, wah! The villagers roared, wah, wah! Dadaji looked at Anil and rubbed his belly. A rumble grew into a mighty roar. He smacked his lips. Does the lad still have the power, Dadaji? Anil asked. There's only one way to find out. And his grandfather said, Does he want roti today? Anil asked. Hanji, hot, hot roti. Dadaji said, his mouth beginning to water. Mmm, with salty grains to lick. And a bit of tongue-burning mango pickle, Dadaji said, drooling a little. Mmm, it sounds like they are about to cook together. Let's see. Anil ran to ask his mother to make roti, but she was on the phone with Aunt Venu. So Anil tugged at the edge of Dadami's sari. No roti today, she said with her eyes sh and shooed him away. Next, Anil tried his dad, who only ruffled the newspaper and dug his nose deeper into the pages. And lastly, finally, Anil tried his big sister, Kiran, but she didn't want sticky globs of dough getting stuck under her starry nails. Don't worry, Dadaji said Anil. I watch mom make roti all the time. I'll help you get your power back. So Anil is going to help Dadaji make some roti. Let's see how. Anil opened the kitchen cupboard. He pushed past the rice and the red lentils. He pushed past the spices and the green lentils. <gasps> watch out, cried mom. Anil found the flour and dumped some into a big bowl. Anil found the salt and dumped that in too. ay uh, oh dear, exclaimed Dadima. So much? But Dadaji loved salt. Next, Anil added the water. <coughs> said Mom. So much water. Kiran laughed at the watery mess. Hi, Chuck. Would you like to read with us? <laughs> but Anil did not care. He just dumped more flour in. Uh, uh, chew! Kiran sneezed in a flowery cloud. Arwa! The boy has talent, said Dadaji. So he used flour, salt, and water so far. Anil mixed the flour and water and added more salt and began to knead the dough, squishing it together. And he punched it, squishing it down and pushed it, moving it around. And he pulled it apart. Arwa! <laughs> exactly like Badi Ma, shouted Dadaji. When the dough was smooth, Anil rolled it into balls. Oh, that's a lot of dough. Enough for a roti stack as high as the ceiling. He's planning to make a lot of roti. Then Anil grabbed a rolling pin and one of the balls. The dough stuck here and it stuck there but Anil didn't give up. He rolled north, he rolled south, he rolled east, and he rolled west. Hanji, cried Dadaji, here it goes. Bit by bit, little by little, the first roti began to form. It looks like the USA. His sister is noticing it looks like the shape of another country. Roti can be any shape, right, Baba? Dadaji said, winking at Anil. It can be any shape. 
and Neil rolled out more and more balls of roti dough. Deco, look! Roti number 10 is a perfect circle, remarked Dudley Ma. Hanji practice makes perfect. So when he started, it was a fun shape and still eat okay to eat. And it got rounder. With more practice, he didn't give up. And rounder. And then it became, he was able to make a perfect circle because he kept trying. Whoa. When it was time to cook the roti, Daddy Ma got the tawa pan smoky hot and added some butter. The first roti hissed very carefully. Daddy Ma helped Anil flip it. The roti danced and sputtered some more, all brown and buttery. Did Daddy Ma make them like this? Anil asked. Hanji, Daddy G said, nodding. At last, all the roti were ready. Anil piled them up in a high, high, high stack. Hot, hot roti for Dada G, Anil announced in his biggest voice. He made it just for his grandpa, for Dada G. <gasps> wow, wow exclaimed Dadaji. He grabbed a warm, steamy roti from the stack and took one bite. And another. And another. He chomped and chewed. Mmm. Mmm. Dadaji said, smacking his lips. <coughs> he licked salty specks from his fingers. One by one. Do you feel the power, Dadaji? Anil asked. Hanji, Dadaji said, flexing his muscles. Find me snorting a snorting water buffalo to wrestle. Anil giggled. There are no water buffaloes here. Two hissing cobras to tie in a knot? Dadaji asked. Dadaji! <laughs> well, surely those are three elephants I hear trumpeting in the backyard. Dada G said as he gobbled up another roti and licked the salt from his fingertips. Anything is possible, Bobby. Let's see what we can do. Are you ready? Okay. Hand in hand, Anil and Dada G went outside to find new adventures. First, they made the earth rumble underneath their feet. Then they shook a mighty apple tree for Dada Mi's, Daddy Mi, Daddy Ma's pie. Last, they made bare feet touch the blue sky. Dada G, the power came back, Anil cried. Dada G smiled. Hanji. He said, the power of the hot, hot roti came back to the lad from a village from far, far away. Thank you, my tiger, my little tiger. Thank you. The end. That was really fun. I enjoyed reading a book about a special food that another family likes to make. So far, we've read three books about families that like to make different things that are special to their family. In this one, we learned about Dadaji, Anil's grandfather, who was remembering a food he liked to eat when he was younger. And that food was this bread called roti, if you'd like to make it at home, check in the description below and I'll have the recipe just for you. And I'll be making the recipe next week if you'd like to tune in and watch with me. And maybe we can bake together. <laughs> Bye everyone.